Hello everybody! Welcome back to the Wolf Hunters channel, y'all. My name is John of the Wolf Hunters. Next to me, she looks stunning. I had to check to make sure. Oh, thanks. You look stunning, dear. <laughs> I like those dangly earrings. Thanks. There's many layers to them. It's beautiful. It is! Dolly, hey! We are here to react to some music for you guys. If you look beneath this video, there's some links in the description box. Go check them out! You could even request your own reaction video, darn it! That's right. And I think you should consider it. It's an option. It's a great option, so... You know. <laughs> Anyways, today's request is brought to us by one of the funniest, one of the greatest requesters of all time. It is... Donkey Donk! And uh, today, we are checking out some more Peter Shikel. Yay! Shikili. New Horizons in Music Appreciation. Ooh. <laughs> Let's read the email. It says, Hi, Dolly and John. Hey! hey. Oh, I, it's a different pronunciation. Peter Shikili. Shikili. Shame, you got it oh. so wrong. <laughs> Peter Shakili was the Weird Al of classical music. Ooh. He is best known as the discoverer of the fictional composer P.D.Q. Bach. Okay, I get you. So he's fictional. He made him up, but he ah. discovered him. Okay, now that makes more sense. Um, he was also a great composer of more serious music. However, my favorite shtick of his was him presenting a Beethoven symphony as a radio sportscast. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a great idea. Mrs. Kidank, who is a professional violist. Ooh. What? That is Wait incredible. a second. You never said this. Jane. Professional violist? That's so cool. That's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. I don't, can, I, can we hear something? I would like to. That'd be fun. Anywho. Okay. <laughs> is not amused by Mr. Shikili's, Shikili's, Shikili's. We can say it right. <laughs> I think that's right. Um, hi, Jinx. I think the real issue is that he's she's offended by his penchant for telling viola jokes. <laughs> it's a penchant that I have adopted and often steal from him verbatim. Here's an example. This will likely irritate the wife. <laughs> What is going on right now? What's the difference between a viola and an onion? Nobody cries when you chop up a viola. Oh. <laughs> Dang, is there really viola haters out there? I, I didn't know, dude. I had no idea. I hope you enjoy Donkey Donk. Thank you so much. And now we know that uh, we are officially party to um, making fun of Mrs. Kidong a little no. bit. <laughs> no, we're just reacting to it. It's true. We were forced to read those notes, Mrs. Kidong, and I'm kidding. <laughs> that joke was kind of funny, though, I'll admit. But not that I have a problem with the viola. But you can put any instrument in there and it would be fun. It's just a funny joke. Andy Hugh, before we get into this, we need your help, everybody. If you guys love Peter Shakili. And all that, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and definitely, most assuredly, comment below! Let's go. And now it's time for New Horizons in Music Appreciation. Different approaches to the problem of popularizing the 19th century classics. I heard there's dogs classics. barking in the background. Now, what? unlike Is the Baroque masterworks, 19th century He's pieces such food. as the Beethoven symphonies are usually so long and melodramatic that the average listener has to be informed through the use of program notes as to what's going on in order to prevent him from falling into a confused slumber. <laughs> the only trouble is that they always turn the lights down in concert halls so you can't read the notes while the piece is being played. Oh my gosh, that apple juice. So, here is a new He's solution being eager on to a perennial problem. Oh. Good evening, music fans. Here we are at Philharmonic Hall in New York Mills, Minnesota. 
It's a beautiful <laughs> night for a concert. There's not a cloud in the ceiling. And there's quite a crowd out here. Uh, about how many do you think there are, Bob? Oh, I don't know, Pete. Well, neither do I, but it's quite a crowd. And I think they're looking forward to hearing the Screaming. New York Mills Philharmonic playing against the Danish conductor Heilige Dankesang. And here he comes now, ascending the podium. And the players are all lined up and ready to begin the are first inning doing? of Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 in C minor. And they're off with a four-note theme. This is very exciting. The beginning of a symphony is always very exciting, folks. I don't know whether it's slow or fast yet because it keeps stopping. It doesn't seem to be able to get off the ground yet. And it looks like, yes, it looks like we're coming up to a cadence here, folks. Uh, the violins didn't cut off there. A little trouble with the violins. They weren't watching. And there's that four-note <laughs> theme again, folks. And another stop. Just can't seem to get this piece off the ground. <laughs> now it seems to be rolling a little bit. It seems to be building up. Tell me, Bob, do you think you'd call that four-note idea a theme or a motif? Well, Pete, the uh, technical term would be motif, which he uses to build a theme. I see. Thanks for setting me straight about that, Bob. Well, we're heading into the second theme section here, and we can expect a little modulation down there. Wow, did you hear that, Bob? Somebody down there in the horn section really flubbed that note. That was one of the worst fumbles I think I've ever witnessed in all my days. I think it was number one, wasn't it, Bob? Yes, it was, Pete. That was uh, Bobby Cornwell in the first chair, and that's the third major flub he's made this season, giving him a solo average for the season of approximately 0.247355, which is pretty darn low for a first chair man. You think there's some chance he might be sold to another orchestra? Well, it's hard to say, Pete. Uh, Cornwell's very good in the long solos, things like the uh, rock mine and Atlantic concerto. So I think if he pulls himself together a bit, uh, they'll probably keep him around. Although I suppose he might. Well, I think it's in. development time down there now, Bob. Uh, let's see what's going to happen. The horns are starting it off. Uh, they seem to be in pretty good shape now, and I get the feeling that we're probably going to be hearing a lot of that four note motif, <laughs> don't you, Bob? Yes, I do. <laughs> so do I, Bob. Well, they obviously are stuck with that. This idea is hilarious. This is wild. And it's actually really cool that he's calling out something that he actually sees as a problem. At the beginning, he's talking about how, like, you kind of need these notes. Mm -hmm. but you can't read them because it's dark. So that's kind of uh, like an interesting <laughs> explanation for why he, like, had this idea. <laughs> and it's really funny how they're, like, doing the characters, like, from the old mm -hmm. baseball broadcast. You know, it's cool, man. Yeah. It is a really good shtick, dude. Absolutely. And they're actually saying real stuff, which is kind of funny. <laughs> And did they, that dude really messed up in the recording and they're calling it out like by name? That's Poor crazy, people. man. That's funny, dude. That four note motif and uh, going to be fooling around with it for quite a while. You notice it's pretty hot in here, Bob? Yes, I do, Pete. Yeah, I think the uh, air conditioning has gone off, which is just one of the things. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something going on down there on the stage, folks. There's something happening down there. It's really building up tension. The crowd is getting very excited. The brasses have come in and the timpani and everybody, and it's extremely exciting. I think we're building up to a fugue. No, the basses are not picking up the theme, folks. It is not a fugue. The violins tried to make it one, but the basses are not following up. No, instead of a fugue, folks, he seems to be taking the theme and breaking it up into little pieces. Just two notes left of that theme now being thrown around from player to player. And it's getting softer and softer down there, folks. I think they're losing steam. They seem to be running out of steam. And it's just getting a little <laughs> bit lethargic down there, if you want to know the truth. It's gotten down to one note now. And things are... Wait a minute. The brasses have come in and tried to pep things up. A welcome relief. But I'm afraid to no avail. Things are still pretty somber. Wait a minute. They hear they come again. They're really determined. It sounds very familiar. And I think we've reached the recap, Bob, don't you? There's no doubt about it. Beethoven Symphony usually has a recap right after the uh, second quarter, and this one is falling right in the line. Well, let's see if those violins can cut off with the rest of the orchestra, and the cadence is coming up. Wait a minute. This time it's the oboe holding the note too long. Wait, he's, he's playing a cadenza. He must be out of his mind. He thinks it's an oboe concerto. <laughs> the conductor's standing down there. He doesn't know what to do. Have you ever heard anything like that, Bob? I uh, certainly haven't, Pete. I think it was a disgraceful <laughs> display of lack of teamsmanship. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Highwood's name wasn't on the roster next season, although I must say that the fans really seem to go for these uh, outbursts of temperament. Well, I always say, Bob, professional music teams wouldn't exist without the spectators. Anyway, we're into the home stretch here with the second theme coming up, and we should be in C minor right up to the double bar. 
Wait a minute. That's really something, Bob. The piece's build is being in C minor, and yet it looks like it's going to end in C major. It's really something, Pete. Well, I think it's something that the Composers Commission ought to look into, and I suspect that they will as soon as this uh, gets out. But it looks like it's going to be an ending anyway. Things are building up a little there. The violins have really gotten a hold of things. They're really beginning to roll. And now he's adding all the woodwinds there. He's thrown in all his brass and the timpani. And it's duty all the way, folks. He's got a great piece on his hands here. And he looks like he's really coming into the home stretch. But like I said, about wraps it up. Hey, Bob? Yeah, Pete, it's kind of good. I think he can really have something to be proud of himself here. Wait a minute! The brasses are taking the theme! They're not running it! They're taking the theme and running ahead. Bob, this piece is definitely going to go into overtime. I can see that. The crowd is going wild. They're standing up on their feet. They're jumping. They're stomping. They're yelling. And let me tell you that down on that stage, the players are doing a bit of running around themselves. Nobody, but nobody knows where the theme is. The audience, not the players, nobody knows where that theme is. Everybody is running around. And believe me, it's very exciting. This is the kind of thing that only happens once in ten years, folks. They've got a new theme going on down there. I can't believe it, Bob. Do you know where this new theme comes from? Well, Pete, it probably comes from, uh... uh no, I don't, Pete. Well, they're tossing it around now. <laughs> uh, the woodwinds have it, and then the strings have it. Nobody seems to be able to keep his hands on that theme. It's getting tossed around from player to player, from section to section. And believe me, folks, the audience is just as confused as the players is about who is going to have that theme finally. Wait a minute, the strings have got a hold of it. The strings have got a hold of that theme, and they are not going to let go! What's this? I can't believe my ears! It sounds as if it's another recap! It sounds as if he's going right back to the beginning! If this is true, it's the first time it's happened in ten years of concert casting. Wait, wait a minute. Those sound like final chords, though. This may be... That may be it, folks. I'm looking down at the referee. Yes, yes, that is it. That is the end of the piece. The players are taking off their helmets, and the conductor has turned around and is acknowledging the cheers of the crowd. Well, it was quite a symphony, wasn't it, Bob? It was quite a symphony, Pete, and I think the fans uh, feel that they got their money worth. So do I, Bob. <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt about who won this contest, either. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the critics slap a stiff penalty on some of the players, particularly Bobby Corno. Neither would I, Pete. And, of course, this was a very important victory for uh, Haile Gadankazong since it puts him right up there at the top of the conductor's league. That's right, Bob. That means that he'll be up against the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony in the World 12-Tone Series next month. And uh, let's see, they not only lead the orchestral league, but I think they're unbeaten this season, aren't they, Bob? You said it, Pete, and if uh, Dankazong can win four concerts off them... He'll be the first conductor to earn the pennant since uh, Toscanini. Well, that's quite a challenge, Bob. <laughs> now I think I'd better be heading down to the locker rooms to have a chat with Dunkazong himself. Well, Pete, I think he was supposed to be doing a baton commercial after the concert, but uh, why didn't you give it a try? I'll do that, Bob. So for now, this is Pete Chickaly And uh, Bob Dennis. Chicken. Signing off for the wonderful wide world of notes. Ah, wow, dude. That was a really good skit, man. They really committed to it. Like they um they followed every movement and made yeah. it made it sound like it wasn't planned or something, you know? Yeah. That was really cool. I like that. I like that. that was, the oboe thing was funny. Yeah. Like, he thinks it's an oboe concerto. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, dude. Donkey Dog! Ooh. Thank you so much for that. Now I understand a little bit more of why you enjoy these kind of like riffs on classical music. Cause it's in your family. Yeah. That's really awesome, dude. We seriously want to hear Mrs. Kidonk play something. So yes. send us a file, I don't know, a, a video, anything. I would love to hear that. And Mrs. Kidonk, if you're watching, although we did laugh at that viola joke, we have nothing against violas. That's right. We think they're amazing. Just like you. <laughs> Anyways, that's enough uh, damage control, I think. <laughs> we love you both. We love you guys. Everybody else, thank you for hanging out. If you're enjoying yourself, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any more fun hijinks here with us. And we will see you again very soon. We love you. Bye. Bye. I just want to my grave.